Welcome to BizWire. I'm Joseph Nordstrom in Beijing. Last Tuesday, after China's Central Committee released its outline communique of their four-day meeting called the Third Plenum, many were disappointed by what they perceived as weak reforms to state-owned enterprises, or SOEs. As more details become available, though, significant changes, if not comprehensive and unprecedented as promised, are in the works for firms that dominate over half of China's economy. As with any plan, the real importance will be what actually happens, but for the time being, the official directives look positive. To begin with, the country will ask SOEs to contribute more of their profits to the government to make up for budget shortfalls. SOEs are to contribute 30 percent of their profits to the state in order to help fund social welfare programs that are in turn designed to give Chinese the confidence to consume more. As we detailed yesterday on BizWire, the party says it will give the market the right to set prices and push forward with changes to the pricing of resources such as natural gas, oil, electricity and water, which will greatly affect spending by SOEs with the hope of making them use resources more efficiently. Managing director of GK Dragonomics in Beijing, Arthur Krober, says he agrees with others that China's declining productivity growth and exploding debt are both substantially due to what he calls bloated SOEs, which take a disproportionate share of bank credit and other resources but deliver even lower returns on investment. Krober says that while privatization is off the table, subjecting SOEs to much more intense competition and tighter regulation appears to be a big part of Xi Jinping's agenda. Krober says this approach is consistent with a long and generally successful tradition in China's gradual march away from a planned economy. He wrote in Foreign Policy that the key insight of economic reformers, including President Xi Jinping, is that the bedrock of a successful modern economy is not private ownership, as many Western free market economists believe, but effective competition. Krober says SOEs will have to become more efficient if the competitive environment for private enterprises is improved by such measures as increasing their access to capital, land and energy, and by eliminating regulatory and local protectionist barriers to investment. Krober points out that as a result, over time the economic role of SOEs is eroded and overall economic efficiency improves without the need to fight what he describes as epic and costly political battles over privatization. China has also decided to allow more private capital into the market to develop what's described as a mixed ownership economy. China Radio International said the country will vigorously develop mixed ownership while keeping the dominant role of public ownership with the state-owned economy playing a leading role. Not all the reforms are aimed at taming and bringing SOEs down to size. China Daily reports that leaders are widening financing channels for local state-owned enterprises in order to ease the growing debt burden on local governments. The measures include allowing more enterprises to issue short-term debt in the domestic market and to raise capital via so-called dim sum bonds in overseas renminbi markets. These reforms, while important, shows that the party retains a strong commitment to a very large role for state-owned firms to play in the country's economic development, but now with a bit more room for private enterprise. You're watching BizWire on the Blue Ocean Network, China's first and only privately owned broadcast media. Our full episode can be seen on our website, bon.tv backslash biz wire. In just a second, we'll continue with more insight into the big picture of China's economy.